Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. If you have your Bibles, if you'll take them out, I want to go to a passage this morning. Romans chapter 15. Josh, I may have messed you up this morning, first service. We're going to read this out of the New Living Translation. Romans 15. Romans 15. This is uh, the text for today. But I want to... Uh, I want to speak the word of the Lord into your heart and into your life not just your ears but into your life today so I just want to encourage you right now just to kind of get in a receiving mode okay just kind of get in a receiving process this is not my words this is the word of the Lord Romans chapter 15 and verse 13 I pray that God the source of hope will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will overflow. That's a good word for somebody today. You will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, you may have your Bible. I'd just like to ask you to close your eyes right now. That way, all distractions, everything, I just want you to quiet your mind for just a moment. I want to read this word over you again today. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you are trusting in him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, today fulfill your word not just in our hearing, but in our life, in our minds, in our hearts, and in our spirit. Father, let the power of your word be released. Hmm. May the power of your word be released today. To bring joy and peace. And God, to do so in a measure that completely fills them. Completely fills their mind. Completely fills their hearts. Completely fills their spirit with joy. Joy the world can't give. Joy the world can't take away. Father, I pray it to be so in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, to whom be all the glory, to whom be all the honor, to whom be all the power, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. May his word be fulfilled in our hearts. We've been talking since the beginning of the year about building champions in Christ. And this morning I want to share with you a character trait that will strengthen you and help you on our journey together in Christ. Many 
in our world today are on a quest to find happiness in this life, but the truth is for many there on the quest, it seems, of a lifetime. And yet in spite of all of their wondering, in spite of all of their efforts, they are not attaining what they're looking for. One of the reasons that I believe many walk through life empty-handed, waiting on their ship to come in, only finding the ship never comes to the dock of their life. Because they're searching for happiness when in reality joy is what is needed. Happiness is circumstantial. Joy, on the other hand, cannot, somebody needs to underline that word in your mind, joy cannot be altered by circumstances. Joy will weather the storms Joy will weather the circumstances, and joy will bring you out on the other side. Now, happiness. Happiness is defined as a state of well-being, pleasurable or satisfying experience. It has been said that there are people who bring happiness wherever they go. It has also been said that there are people who bring happiness whenever they go. I don't know what camp you are in today, but I can assure you that happiness is circumstantial. When the things of life change, so does happiness. If things aren't going great, then I'm not so happy. If things are going wonderful and nobody has thrown a curveball into my life, then everything's good. Happiness is dependent upon the things that are outside. That's an important word for you to take note of today. Happiness is dependent on the outside. Temporary things on the outside, people, weather, the holidays, gifts, money, possessions, how I look, happy if thin is in, not so happy if we're not so thin. All outward things. If the wife is wifing right and the husband is husbanding right and the kids are kidding right, I'm happy. If the boss is bossing correctly, according to the way I think they ought to, then I'm happy. Joy, on the other hand, Joy is not dependent. Joy has absolutely nothing to do with my circumstances. Joy has nothing to do with outward circumstances of my life. People, circumstances, situations cannot steal your joy. It will take your happiness. But it can't touch your joy. Joy cannot be bought with money, therefore it cannot be affected by money or the lack thereof. Joy is not determined by what I'm given or what I may be robbed of. Joy, it's not shallow, it is not blown about by every stormy wind that blows my way. Joy is a deep abide delight my friend that will keep hold of you notice what I said joy will keep hold of you everything else you're trying to keep hold of it you're trying to keep hold of the money you're trying to keep hold of people you're trying to keep hold of all these things but friend if you'll get a hold of joy joy will keep a hold of you and joy will carry you through in the darkest of nights joy will be there when no one else is there joy will see you through when you can't see your way through 
Joy will be with you when the money's gone. Joy will be with you when outwardly we are wasting away. Joy will be with us, though, as we are renewed day by day. Joy will be with you when your friends have failed you and your family has disowned you. Joy will be with you when you're on the mountaintop. And joy will not leave your side as you journey through the valley. Joy will be your companion when everybody else is gone. Joy will shelter your soul while the world is crumbling around you. When the world is a raging storm around you, joy, joy, joy will bolster your heart. Joy will bolster your strength. Joy will bolster your resolve. And it will give you what you need to hold on while you wait on God to work. Joy. Joy is supernatural delight. Joy is feelings of elation founded in God. It's supernatural. Why is it supernatural? Because it comes from God. You can't get it here. You can't get it from the earth. You can't get it from people. You can't earn it. You can't merit it. Joy is supernatural because it comes from God. Joy is feelings of elation. Because they are founded in God. It has been said that joy is true contentment that comes from internal factors like our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. True joy is eternal because it's based on a relationship with Jesus Christ who is the source, as the scripture said, of all hope. And all our joy. We spend much of our lives on the quest for happiness when in reality, joy is what we need. Now we're going to start, we're going to start a journey together walking through this topic of joy. First service, we didn't get very far, and I'm probably not going to get real far today, and that's okay. Because I want the word of the Lord to speak to your heart today. I want you today to be able to shut out the voices of the earth. The voices of this world that tell you what will make you happy and what will make you content. I hear all the people, I hear people say all the time, if I just get a better husband, if I get a better wife, then I'll be happy because God wants me to be happy. Friend, God doesn't want you to be happy. God wants you to have joy. Hmm. I probably need to come down there and say that again because it went out here and went straight down. <laughs> the Bible doesn't promise you happiness, but the Bible does promise you joy. Amen. Joy is supernatural delight. To take note of this. Supernatural delight found in the person, in the person of God. Joy is supernatural delight found in the person of God. Joy is found by leaning in and leaning on and loving the Lord your God who made you. Friend, he's not just any God. He's your God. He's not just concerned about the planets that are orbiting around the sun, but he is passionately and intensely in love with you. This world has created a scenario. This world has created a set of circumstances where we feel our worth is based on our appearance, on uh, our financial status, on the kind of house I live in, the kind of car I drive, the kind of food I eat, the kind of people I hang out with, the kind of phone I carry in my pocket, the kind of this and the kind of that. My value, according to the world, is found in things of the world. Hmm. Can we not see how fading that is? Paul and I, not long ago, were looking at some pictures, and it was pictures of when we got married. It is amazing how, 
in a short period of time. If 27 years is a short period of time, <laughs> how things have changed. I'm, I'm the same height that I was when we got married. I'm a little wider than I was. I'm, I'm more of a man than I was when we got married. <laughs> when we got married, I had more insulation on top of the roof. Things have changed. And if I go by the theory of the world, I will tell you the longer that I have lived, my value has decreased. Because the world will tell me I got to look a certain way. I got to be a certain way. I've got to do a certain thing to find my worth. I would remind you the Bible says who the God of this age is. The enemy that's fine against your soul. You see, friend, you and I were lovingly created by God. Joy comes when you realize that your life has purpose. I'm not here today because of an evolutionary process. If that were the case, I'll be honest with you, my purpose would be very minuscule. I have purpose today because a heavenly father lovingly created me and made me in the image of his own son. I exist not from the pleasure of man, but for the pleasure of my amazing God. Friend, you and I are his handiwork. He is the potter. We are the clay. The old song says it well. What a friend we have in Jesus. Friend, he's more than you can imagine. He's more powerful than anything you can comprehend. He is the fairest of 10,000 of my soul. He's a personal God. Listen to me. He's a personal God, and he wants to be involved in your life every day not just Sunday every day he wants to be involved in your life every day he wants to walk this journey with you every day he wants to be a part of your life every hour every minute every second the Bible says it's in him that we live and move and have our being if you have your Bibles turn to Psalm 139 Maybe it's your Bible or your phone or your electronic device, wherever you have it. Psalm 139. I want to read this to you because I believe with all of my heart in the power of the Word of God. I believe in the power of the Word to speak into your life. I believe in the power of the Word to change your life. I believe in the power of the Word to transform you. It's not me that you need to hear today. It's Him. Can you say amen? amen. Psalm 139. I want you to get in receiving mode again. Psalm 139 and verse 1. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. This is not when he says, I know you, and he's talking about him knowing me. It's not like, okay, he knows uh, Jerry Galloway, 5268 South, 800 East Upland, Indiana, 46989. The government knows me. It's a different kind of know. When he speaks of knowing in this passage, it's the same knowing when the Bible says that Adam knew his wife Eve and she conceived. It's a knowing of intimacy. It's a, in, an intricate knowing. You have searched me and you know me. There's nothing about me. There's nothing about Jerry Galloway he does not know. There's nothing about you that he doesn't know. You know when I sit, verse 2, and you know when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. Notice this. You are familiar 
with all my ways. Now often, and you can take this passage that way. We'll take this passage from the standpoint, well, God's watching you, and he knows all the bad things you're doing, and he knows all the honor things you're doing, and God's keeping track of all those things. He's writing it all down. Yes, but let's, let's be balanced. That's not the only thing that he knows about me. You're familiar with all my ways. You're familiar with my struggles. You're familiar with my disappointments. You're familiar with the things that hurt. You're familiar with the things that break our hearts. You're familiar with the things that confuse us. You're the things that we can't figure out. You're familiar with my ways, all the things that make my ways you are familiar with. He's aware of. He knows them. You're familiar with all my ways. Look at this. Before a word is on my tongue... You, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before. I like this part. You lay your hand upon me. How many of y'all want his hand to be upon you? Amen. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, you'll place your hand upon your people. Hmm. Father, as a parent, will put their hand on their child. Lord, would you put your hand on us? Put your hand on us to guide us. Put your hand on us to remind us that you love us, lovingly touching your people. Heavenly Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll place your hand upon those who are confused and need direction. Lord, place your hand upon them and give them direction and guidance. Place your hand upon us, we pray in the name of Jesus. Verse 6, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. What he's saying is, I can't, it is so unbelievable, I can't even fathom, I can't grasp all this information. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I sail on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Friend, no matter where life takes you, God will go right along on the trip. Your right hand will, notice this, hold me fast. I'm safe and secure in his hand. Can you say amen to that? Whew. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light will become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. <laughs> Whew. Man, the word will bless your heart today. The night will shine like the day, for the darkness is as light to you. Man, isn't that good? Look at verse 13. For you created my inmost being, and you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. There's your answer right there to the world's philosophy on your value. When we look in the mirror and we don't see how, we don't like the things that we see are changing and we don't like us compared to somebody else and we don't like us compared to a picture. We don't like us compared to another a person, another image. We don't like us. We don't like the way we're looking. We don't like the way we are and we feel poorly about who we are and we feel discouraged and we feel like I'm never going to be good enough and I'm never going to be enough and I'm not smart enough and I'm not wise enough and I can't do the things they can do and I'll never be the person that they are and I'll never this, I'll never that. And it won't be very long. The enemy then will sit on your shoulder and he'll agree. Don't ever say anything that he can agree with. He'll agree and he'll say, yeah, you're not, you're not of anything. You have no value. Nobody loves you. Nobody has ever loved you. People only tolerate you. 
And the more you hear that stuff, how many of you know it doesn't make you feel better and better and better, does it? The world around you gets darker and darker and darker and darker and deeper and deeper and deeper the pit. Let me challenge you to do something. If you are wrestling with your value in regard to appearance, take this passage of Scripture, verse 14, write it and put it on the mirror. It's quiet in the house of God today. If you don't feel like you have any value, wherever that place is that your value is challenged, write this passage down and post it there. I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. My life has incredible value. You may see it. You don't have to see it. Oh, Jesus. Freedom came in that statement right there. It really doesn't matter what you think about me. My freedom is not bound up in what you think about me. You don't have anything to do with my value. That may be a whole sermon right there. I don't know. I love y'all, and I believe you love me. But our value is not bound up in each other. When you pick up a magazine or you turn on your uh, computer or you turn on your iPad and immediately an image shows up that challenges your value, your value has nothing to do with any of them. Listen, your value has nothing to do with anything on this earth. Jesus, help me. Holy Spirit, I need you to reveal this. Folks, what I'm telling you today is not mind-based. It is spirit-revealed. And until it gets in your spirit, you'll continue to wrestle with it in your mind. Your value is not based in anything that the world has to offer. Your value is all wrapped up right here. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I thank you, Father, that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you, God, for making us the way you made us. Thank you, Father, for giving us the gifts and the talents you've given to us. I thank you, God, that you didn't give me somebody else's gifts. You gave me my gifts. I thank you, God, the people in this congregation, you gave them exactly, Father, what you wanted them to have. I thank you that every person in this room is fearfully and wonderfully made by you. I thank you, Father, that every person in this room is fearfully and wonderfully made in your image. I thank you that every person in this room is fearfully and wonderfully made by your plan and your purpose for their life. Thank you, Father. Well, the church said, amen. amen. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, for you saw my unformed body. And all the days ordained for me were written in your book before even one of them came to be. You see, my mom gave birth to me. There is a bond between a mother and a child that the father and the child will never have. I saw... Uh, Stephanie and, and uh, David Ramirez, uh, part of our church, she just had a baby just a couple days ago. And uh, I saw in the pictures that they posted, old David, most of you know David, he's sitting over there and he's on that baby and he's grinning from ear to ear and he's just happy as can be and everything's wonderful. But then I saw a picture of Stephanie. And Stephanie, that baby was laying right here. And David had been smiling ear to ear, but Stephanie had a different countenance on her face. There was something different about the connection Stephanie had with that little baby that David, was, David wasn't having it. It was a connection between the mother and the child. My mother carried me in her womb. My mother gave birth to me. 
And that's an important part of life. But listen to me. Before my mother saw me for the first time, my God had already seen me. Before my mother knew me and knew that I was going to be a boy and knew that she was going to name me after my father, my heavenly father had already purposed my life. You see, right now in my life, one of the joys of my life is that I have the same name as my dad. Now, most of you know me as Jerry, but that's not actually my real name. My real name is Gerald, and I am named after my father. My father's name was Gerald. And that's an important part of my life. And now that my father has gone on to be with Jesus, it is, uh, wow, it is way more valuable to me that I have his name than it ever seemed to be before. And that's important because it kind of marked out my, my destiny on this earth. It kind of marked out my reputation to follow my father's footsteps and to be like my father. Before my daddy ever laid eyes on me the first time and said, Let's name him after me. My heavenly father looked around heaven and said, let's make him after our image. Let's make him in our image. Let's make him like us. Let's put what's in us inside of him. And the Bible says all of my days were ordained before even one began to be. And all my days were open before the heavenly father like a scroll. And he said, you know what? I'm going to have him do this here. I'm going to have him do this there. And the scripture says all the steps of a righteous man are what? They're ordained by the Lord it's not my steps it's his steps it's not my dream it's his dream it's not my purpose it's his purpose friend when that gets inside of you you won't be going around saying anymore my life's not worth anything I don't care about living I don't care I'm never going to be anything but you can walk around saying I am fearfully I am wonderfully made by the heavenly father his plan is being unfolded in my life I don't know what Monday will bring for Jerry but I know whatever Monday is God's plan God's plan will still be in action and God's plan will still be at work in my life. Who Jesus. Verse 17. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Hmm. How many know God has some good thoughts about your life? And we need to... We have not done well in balancing that God is just and God is loving. We tend to slide all the way to the loving side and leave justice out, or we tend to slide all the way to the justice side and leave the love out. But he's a God. He is full of love, and he's full of justice. He has good thoughts about you. I've been reading my Bible uh, path as I'm reading through the Word of God this year. I've been going through uh, the Word of Jeremiah. And in Jeremiah, you find, man, the the people uh, of God, man, they were just, man, they're being terrible. They're serving all kinds of false gods and And God had told them, I'll be a God to you. I'll be a father to you. I'll do all these great things if you follow me. And they stiff necked said, we'll do what we want to do. God began the process of carrying them off to the land of Babylon. But you can't read it and read that without hearing his heart. And in his heart, he says, but you know what? I'm going to bring you back, and I'm going to restore you, and I'm going to make you new, and I'm going to do something in you you can't even begin to imagine, and I'm going to be so good to you, you can't even understand how good I'm going to be to you, and and I'm going to be a father like you've never known a father to be. He has good thoughts towards you. Verse 18, if I were to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I love this last phrase. When I awake, I am still with you. 
We're always waiting on God to show up. I like that word. When I wait, I'm still with you. I'm still right here in your presence. I still have my hand in your hand. I'm still with you. What am I trying to tell you today? He is a personal God. He's a personal God. Father, in the name of Jesus, would you remind us that you're a personal God? In the name of Jesus, Father, would you remind us that you love us and you care for us? Father, today we need to hear your voice. Because, Father, the voice of the world is so loud around us. The voice of the world that declares our value is so loud. The voice of the world seems to resonate about us. God, we need to hear your voice. I pray for every person in this room right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you remind them of how much you love them. Father, I pray right now you remind them of how much you care for them. I pray, Father, you remind them this morning that they are fearfully and wonderfully created by you. God, in this still, quiet moment, would you just remind us? Oh, God of heaven, would you touch us today in this place? God of mercy and grace, God of mercy and grace. We need you. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you right now in this moment. We need you, Father. Lord, with those voices that have been resounding, we need your voice to be louder today. We need your voice today. We need to hear the words of our Father. We need to hear the words of our Father. Holy Father, in the name of Jesus. 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 God, just minister right now to hearts. For those who are broken today, I pray you'll be a healing touch. For those, God, who have been held captive by discouragement, disappointment, disillusionment, depressions, Father, I pray for your healing. I pray for those who have been overwhelmed with sadness. God, would you give us joy in the place of our mourning and sorrow? For those who've been at a war within themselves, I 
I pray, Father, you will speak peace. In Jesus' name, please, please keep your heads bowed if you would, please. I want this room to stay as still as can be, please, for the next few moments. Right now, with all heads bowed, this may be tough on you. But I want to pray for you. If you're dealing with your value and your worth, would you just slip up your hand right where you're at? Say, please remember me in prayer. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Others, you say, that's me. I'm wrestling with it. Yes. Yes. I want to pray for you right now. I don't want you to move a muscle. Just stay right where you're at. Father, right now, in this moment, would you just wrap your arms around your people? These are your kids, Father. God, I pray in this moment right now for a supernatural work of you, Father. God, whatever has been the root of Whatever has been the cause of this battle, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus you go to that place in us. Father, if it's because of words that have been spoken over us, Father, there's nothing too hard for you. And I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, I pray for healing in that area of their life. Father, if the root is because we have forgotten what you've said about us, that the world's voice has been clamoring so much louder God, I pray that today, if that's the case, Father, I pray today your word would resound like a trumpet blast in the inside of us. And it would be your word being declared in us, through us. For you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God the Father. You are created in his image. Your life is of great value to him. You, you are more valuable to God than you can imagine. Father, I pray for healing. Hmm. Healing in Jesus' name. Father, for those who are being harassed today in the area of their mind, the words of the enemy. Father, you said that our enemy was the accuser of the brethren. He is a liar and the father of all lies. He is the one that works to tear down, to kill, steal, and destroy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bind the lying tongue of the enemies. I bind in the name of Jesus. I curse every foul word that's been spoken against them. I curse every foul intention that's been spoken against them. I curse every word of our enemy that's been spoken into their life. And I bless the word of God in their heart and in their mind. I bless the word of God to have power. I bless the word of God to be released with power like never before. I bless the word of God to have healing results 
in their heart and their mind. Your word, Lord, is quick. It's powerful. It is alive. It is life-giving. And I bless the word of God to have a life-giving effect inside of them. Life-giving. Life-yielding. We curse the spirit of death. We curse the spirit of uh, destruction. We curse the spirit of despondency in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that as the word says, you will give us completely uh, a life filled with peace and joy. Lord, joy can only come from you. If we've been chasing happiness, Lord, what we really need is your joy. So, Lord, fill us with your joy today. All across this building, would you just lift your hands to him right now? As a, as a child will lift their hands to a parent to be picked up. Father, in Jesus' name, would you just give us your joy? If you want his joy, just ask him right where. Father, I pray the floodgates of heaven would be open. And I pray that you would begin to pour out streams of joy in the lives of your people. Pour out streams of joy into their mind. Pour out streams of joy into their heart. Pour out streams of joy. And Father, I pray. It would overflow. Overflow. Lord, just don't pour it in. Pour it in till it comes out. Fill them with joy. Fill them with joy. Fill them with joy. Fill them with joy. Fill them with joy in Jesus' name. Fill them with joy in Jesus' name. Joy this world can't give and joy this world can't take away joy that is not based on my circumstance or situation but joy that comes from you Father Lord grant us joy we pray grant us joy we pray grant us joy joy Lord let it fill our heart let your joy fill our mind let your joy fill our life I pray joy fill us with your joy I ask Father, I thank you for it today. I believe you for it, Father. And Father, I believe that you are working all things together for the good of them who are called according to your purpose. In Jesus' name. And all the church said, amen. Joy joy the world can't give and joy the world can't take away hmm. I'm really serious about what I said to you earlier that passage in Psalm 139 listen in closing we've prayed don't be shocked if the enemy doesn't try now to challenge what's happened inside of you. Listen, he ain't afraid of you. But he is afraid of my father. You see, when we were kids, my sister and I, we'd kind of, we kind of get to, you know, fussing and fighting and carrying on. And everything was all right until she looked at me and said, you better stop or I'm going to go tell dad. Because you see, I knew my father would take some action. <laughs> the enemy is not afraid of you. But he is afraid of dad. So what you need to do is you need to get dad's word. My sister sometimes, she'd say, you need to do this. I said, why? I don't want to do that. She said, because dad said so. Okay, well, that changed everything then. So when you have that challenge... Take that verse, write it down, put it on the mirror, put it on your iPad, put it wherever you need to. And when the challenge comes, you say, because dad said so, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made by God, my father. Remind yourself, let the power of the word be at work in your life. 
May God bless you today. May he strengthen your faith. May he strengthen your life. May you be filled with the knowledge of his grace and his mercy. May you experience the depth of his incredible love for you. And may the joy of the Lord always be your strength. God bless you. We love you. Have a great day today. Stand firm on the word of God. God bless you. God bless you.